Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Raul Kushwa. How are you today, Raul? I'm good, Tracy. How are you? You know, I've actually dreamed about Predict Medex lately. I mean, let me get this right. This this company is completely dedicated to our health and wellness and using technology for this. Is that correct? Yep, absolutely. It's about using AI to solve problems that plague all of us. Well, I think anyone out there who may not be familiar with Predict Medix, uh, this is this is quite an extraordinary company. You've had a lot of milestones and news releases out here shortly. So let's start with um, your most recent one. You announced uh, a corporate update on the overall company. Can you tell us about some of the highlights, please? Um, yes. So uh, for our infectious disease symptom screening technology, that is for our safe entry stations, uh, we have had successful deployments with uh, several companies, including uh, Fortune 500 companies such as Indian Oil. Um, and we've also had successful deployments with Flow Water. Um, at the same time, uh, we are really ramping up our sales and business development efforts, both from our end and also from the end of our resellers. So just to give you an example, I mean, JuiceWorks, for instance, they have brought on a, a, a really uh, experienced and a senior team of as uh, sales professionals uh, who have been working on certain strategic areas that are going to be the key, not just for our symptom screening technology, but also for our impairment technology. Um, at the same time, we have ramped up uh, our own team internally, uh, and we are kickstarting a large uh, lead gen program here in North America. And at the same time, because in India, we did sign a deal with, uh, or, or we partnered with Paris Defense, uh, they are one of the largest defense contractors in India, and their interest lies in the public sector in India in terms of getting our technology in there. So in India, we are actually establishing uh, full-time operations, and we are, as we speak, hiring a dedicated managing director to lead our operations in India. And the reason being, we are seeing some very large business opportunities that we actually want to capitalize on. Um, and um, uh, yeah, coming back to the North American landscape, we have also signed a letter of intent with one of the largest and most prominent management consulting companies in North America. And their interest lies in becoming resellers for our um, infectious disease symptom screening technology and also for our impairment technology. So just to help the investor intel audience digest this, if Predict Medics is new to your watch list, um, two of our analysts, these were their headlines. Uh, one analyst, uh, award-winning analyst Frederick Kozak, said you offer real competition for the AI-driven remote sensing reality, and you're all ready you know, for production, of course, and sales. Another analyst, Chris Thompson, wrote that you're punching above your weight, um, you keep nailing the heavyweight health tech partnerships. So let's start there. Um, you touched on some of the partnerships you have in that previous answer. Could you maybe just give us the lead uh, relationship you have right now and give us an example of how that works? Okay, yeah, absolutely. So anytime you're talking about developing AI-based algorithms, it's important to have access to that healthcare data. And that's where you have to foster those partnerships in the healthcare sector. So with Predict Medics, for instance, we have partnered with Max Healthcare. It is one of the largest groups of hospitals in Asia. Um, and at the same time, we have just deployed our technology with MGM Hospital in Bombay. And that is one of the largest COVID-19 clinics in India. Uh, and along with that, we have also partnered with McGill University. And there the mandate is about taking our technology to the next level whereby perhaps using our safe entry stations, we can diagnose infectious diseases. I mean, imagine as people are walking through, where we want to go is about saying that, okay, this person has COVID-19 or this person has influenza or they have something else. That is where we want to go eventually with our artificial intelligence technology. You know, I tell you, every time I, I talk to you or we were able to get a hold of you, uh, obviously you're ex exceptionally busy right now. Um, but I always wonder what the deal is with your valuation. It seems to me that you're you're trading at a a microcosm of where you should be right now. Can you can you talk to that right now? Is it is it perhaps because people don't understand 
how significant your technology is or it's just too big to believe. I mean, you're a small cap company that's making deals with multi-billion dollar market cap corporations globally. And, and I, I think maybe they just can't believe it. Could that be part of the, uh, the challenge you're facing presently? I think you're absolutely right because a, a lot of emails that I get, I mean, I read those emails from shareholders and it's like a lot of them don't even believe that we have these kind of partnerships that we have been able to forge. Because the moment you enter into a partnership with a major organization, you got to remember, they do their due diligence before they put their name next to yours. And that due diligence involves looking at the technology as well. And that's where one of the things I would say is that the stock price is, in, in many cases, is not reflective of the company or the underlying business. Uh, with Predict Medics, we have been getting stronger by the day. And I think uh, the corporate update that we put out, um, I mean, hopefully a lot of uh, shareholders or potential shareholders were able to see that. But uh, I mean, you're right. I mean, even according to me, I don't think that the uh, stock price is truly reflective of what we are doing as a company. Well, I think uh, one of the challenges, I know you were one of the, the your management structure and your board is is substantial. I mean, everybody's got multiple PhDs on your team or at least one. Um, do you think maybe you need to hire less smart people to get the word out? I, you know what? I mean, if you ask me, I'm actually in complete agreement with you because at times, I mean, uh, let's say when you talk about artificial intelligence, I tend to speak with the assumption that everyone understands artificial intelligence, but the reality is most of the people do not understand artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence that we speak of now is not machine learning. These are deep learning algorithms that we are talking about. So, uh, I mean, at times, that the, just the assumptions that I have in my head, uh, I mean, they tend to limit in terms of what I'm telling to the overall audience because I just assume that everyone understands what I'm talking about. But I think you have a point. That may be the case. So, Rul, uh, I got to tell you, we've been following you for the last year and we have been so impressed by the milestones that you've been achieving. Dare we ask you what, what to anticipate in the upcoming ones? So I think what we have accomplished over the last few months uh, I think that should be a clear sign in terms of what is coming down the road, considering a lot of our efforts when it comes to sales, business development, a lot of those avenues have really been ramped up as outlined in our corporate update. So um, there is a lot more to come over the next two or three quarters. Well, Raul, as always, it's a pleasure. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Tracy.